Hey everyone, Mark from Coastal Country. Today's video, we're gonna see if we can um, try and put a charge circuit in this um, Parson motor, or Yamaha, as a Chinese Yamaha. Um, hopefully, I've seen two green wires in there on the circuitry, and I'm hoping that runs to a coil which may be pre-made, pre-installed from factory, hopefully. It's got no charge circuit at the moment, but if, it, um, if it's got the coil wire there, we can put a rectifier in there and a regulator, and we should be able to charge our battery. So we'll get into it and um, see what we can find. Let's make it happen. Alrighty. So I'll just take this apart. So I remember seeing some wires in here, which are, oh, there we go, around there. So that's some, a couple of spare wires, and I'm hoping they go to a coil, which is up under the flywheel. So that'll generate AC um, current voltage. So what I've done is I've, before I've even tested it, I've purchased a uh, Yamaha rectifier and regulator. So basically what it does is puts AC in AC power into the green wires there, um, converts the AC power into DC, and then regulates it at, I think it's 13 volts or something like that. So that comes out on your positive wire in the black. So we may be able to mount this up in here somewhere. I think um, if they come with them from factory, I think it's actually set one of these bolts here or something, but I'd be amazed if we can get it to line up perfectly there, but we'll find some sort of spot to mount this if it works. First thing to do is fire it up and see if we can get some voltage off of here. So you've got to love a noisy two-stroke. So that started first pop. So anyway, we've got the multimeter. Uh, we've got it on AC voltage. We'll just connect it up to these green wires and see what we've got. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's six volts roughly. I can hold it properly. I'll give it a bit of a rev, and I'm hoping that'll go up to at least 13 ish or more. So, yeah, maxed out about 15 there. So, we'll hook this rectifier up and see what happens. So, after having a pretty good look around this motor, there is a ton of room down this other side. And there's actually two, like it was actually four bolt holes there, which I wouldn't be surprised if that would have mounted maybe the original one or something. But I reckon we'll just use one of these bolt holes there, mount it that way or sideways, something like that. Just gotta make sure we keep away from these um, throttle and gear linkages. I'm not sure how hot this is gonna get, running a cable over the top of that um, cylinder. But there's other wires there, uh, might come up higher. I've gotta be careful I don't, well, I can't have it where I've got it there because the coils, uh, sorry, the flywheel is actually rubbing up there. So I might have to come around the back here, maybe under this little section there. That might be the go. I'm not sure we'll get any interference with the coils or not, but well, that's loose too. That's interesting. So is that. Anyway, I might have to tighten a few things up in a minute. Uh, anyway, we'll get the cable around to this other side, and then it's really just a matter of um, plugging these green wires straight in, uh, putting an earth on the um, engine somewhere and just measuring the DC voltage off the red wire and all right so I took the little bolt out of there found a longer one 10 mil bolt bolted this on here just temporary it misses all this um, I've got to make sure I run some cables a bit better than this because the flywheel's right behind there nearly rubbing on where my fingers are so I've cable tied it just temporary out of the way here um, and then we'll just run it through around there just so I had enough uh, room to hook the coil up, which I'm assuming is a coil anyway. Um, and then we've got uh, that 10 mil bolt I took out the other side, I've just stuck it in here as an earth, temporary, and then the positive's there. So in theory, you should fire this up, and with the multimeter, I should be able to put the negative on the chassis or the any bit of metal on the engine, and positive on the positive, and hopefully we get a regulated 12, 13 volts. Okay, we'll fire this up. Hopefully we don't let the smoke out of it. Good start.
just pump up a bit more fuel. For some reason it's um, not getting the fuel, so it probably he's got a problem with um, fuel pump maybe. I'll have to have a look at that later. Is awesome. 14 volts roughly DC. Well, that's good 15 volts regulated DC power so it's not bad that obviously works all right uh, now I just got to tidy it up make it so it doesn't get hot around the cylinder and yeah so the things we need to do this motor which will be on a different video uh, I've got to change the thermostat in here because I've got no idea it's been sitting forever no idea what that's like um, I'm going to change the impeller in the leg even though it is pumping water and after that little episode, I might check the fuel pump in this at some point as well because I've got to squeeze the bubble up. But once it's been run for a while, it seems okay. So anyway, we'll tidy up this regulator. And then I've, um, I've already run the cable to the control panel. So all I need to do is run that through the front of the motor through a grommet and hook that up to the power and the negative onto the negative of the motor. And I'll put a quick connect in here as well. So if I do want to disconnect it, um, I can, I might actually do that on the outside of the motor actually. Right, so finally worked out how to mount this regulator. I've got a um, bolt here uh, with a washer and a spring washer on the back of it. This was all out of whack as in uh, no matter which way combination I tried, I can't use any of these other existing holes. So what I've done is I've got a bit of um, heavy stainless steel uh, plate, put a slightest bend in it. Um, so that's going to go like that. Then I've got a spacer out of an old marine um, steering cable. And that's going to go like that and then this sits in there hopefully I've got enough room let's back this other bolt off a bit that will sit in there like that as a bit of a clamp so there's a space behind I can lock that down as hard as I can push that up like that So that'll lock that in pretty solid once that's all done. So I'll just get, a, get the rest of this. <clears throat> so I want to push this up as hard as I can against that spacer. So it's not the prettiest, but definitely it should hold. I end up finding another um, bolt to put the existing earth. I left that alone. I'll put that back where it was. So I've got anti-seize on everything. So I'll crank that up, that is solid as, and that'll act as a bit of a heat sink as well. So what I'm going to do now is just make sure that doesn't touch the flywheel back under here. So I've just wired this up temporary. Um, it's about to start raining, so I'm going to put the boat inside and finish it off. But yeah, with a battery connected under load, uh, it's putting out about 13 volts.
So that's working okay. So what I'll actually do is on that control panel, I'll actually run a switch which is for charge on and off. So I can choose whether I want to charge from the outboard or not. So I'll get this back inside and I'll re do tidy up some of this wiring here. Okay, so we're back in the shed and we've tidied up our circuit a bit. So this is pretty much it. We mounted the regulator rectifier on the other side. Come across the top here, try and avoid a bit of the heat off the engine. Um, we don't want to run in past the high tension side of the coils either because you get a lot of interference and things. Um, so back here we've got the coil wires connected. Red and black's out. I've soldered in a inline fuse. And then that just runs through the front of the motor there to a, you know, like a water resistant connector. And then from the control panel, we've got the other end of that water connector. We'll just join them two together. So we have plenty of flex in the motor at the front later. And um, yeah, we've got our two earths, uh, one from the control panel, one from here, um, basically straight into there. So that'll just sit in there nice and neat like that. Easy to get to if something goes wrong. And I've left that um, female um, connector there just so I can um, use that as a bit of a test spot if we need to. So that is pretty much it. On the control panel itself, the switch that I use to turn the sounder on and off, which we don't really need, I'm actually changing that to turn the charge circuit on and off here. So I'll just use the sounders on and off button as usual. And for some reason, if I want to stop any charge coming from the outboard to the battery or if something goes wrong, I can isolate it at the control panel. So that is it. Um, so that was cool. Um, obviously they've got their own little coil from factory. So um, you just need to put the rectifier regulator in. So, and that was a Yamaha one, didn't cost much. Just online, it was, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks, something like that. So she is good to go. Um, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching again. Um, hit the like if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll, um, hopefully next video will be, I've got to quickly put a walkway up the trailer and then we're going to start doing some fishing. So, all right, catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks.